Our last idea is one that's fundamental to computing and extremely useful, representing sets as binary search trees. So what's a binary search tree? Well, it's a tree with two branches and a special property about the entries at each root. Each entry is larger than all the entries in its left branch and smaller than all the entries in its right branch. Here's an example of a binary research tree. So 7 is bigger than everything over here and smaller than everything over here. It would not be OK to have a 9 somewhere in the left branch, even if it's way down at the bottom, because 9 is bigger than 7. It has to be over on the right. Now there isn't just one binary search tree for any collection of numbers. This same set could be represented in this way as well, picking a different root but still maintaining the property that every root along the way is bigger than everything in its left branch and smaller than everything in its right branch. And here's yet another. OK, so we're going to represent this with a class. We'll talk about that first. Then we'll talk about the uh, algorithms used for set containment and adjoining. The binary tree class is a subclass of the tree class. A binary tree is a tree that has a left and a right branch. So we're going to introduce attributes for left and right. Let's say we want to represent this tree. The important thing is actually that we need to represent what's left and what's right, even when there's only one branch. So down here we see 9 has a right branch that's 11, but it has no left branch. One idea is to fill in the place of the missing left branch with an empty tree. And that's exactly what we'll do in our implementation. And that's so we can clearly denote that there's one non-empty branch and it's to the right, so everything in it will be bigger than the root 9. So E here stands for an empty tree. We can complete our implementation with a related idea which is to say that every binary tree has exactly two branches. So that means all of these leaves have two branches as well, but we'll just make them all empty. So a binary tree always has exactly two branches, and those branches are either binary trees or the empty tree. That's our representation. Let's write some code. So we introduce a binary tree class, which is a subclass of tree that introduces this notion of an empty tree. We didn't need this before because we just had an arbitrary number of branches. But now we do to keep track of the fact that we might have a right branch without a left branch. So we create an empty tree, which is just some arbitrary tree with nothing in it. And we set an attribute for it that says it's empty. Then we define a constructor for the binary tree, which takes an entry, a left branch, and a right branch. It just initializes the tree with two branches left and right. But it also sets an attribute that says is empty is false. So this is not an empty tree because it has a left and right branch. Finally, we access the branches of the tree using property methods so that we can refer to the left and the right branch using the attributes left and right instead of having to write out dot branches bracket 0 and dot branches bracket 1. Now the reason we put this in a subclass as opposed to making it all part of the tree class is that it's only for binary trees that we have a guarantee that there are two branches. So it's guaranteed that this left and this right will actually have a branch to select because we always passed in two branches on construction. An arbitrary tree might not have any branches at all but binary trees always do. Now we can go about the process of defining this structure using an expression. To make our lives easier, we'll give a new name to binary tree, just bin, and then we can define this exact tree as 3 at the root, a left branch with 1, and a right branch with 7, 5, 9, and 11 in that structure, where when we needed to represent the empty left branch, of this subtree, we did it by referring to bin.empty directly. Okay, 
So now we have a way to represent binary search trees. How can we use them? Well, we're going to put all the elements of the set we're trying to represent into a binary tree. And then we'll write a set contains function that traverses the tree to figure out whether some element is there or not. And the key idea is that if the element we're looking for is not the entry at the root of the tree, it can only either be in the left branch or right branch if it's there at all. The left branch if it's less than the entry, the right branch if it's greater than the entry. By focusing on only one branch, we reduce the set by about half with each recursive call to set contains. And by about half, assumes that there's a roughly equal number of elements in the left branch and the right branch. And we're discarding a whole branch each time we traverse the tree. So let's start with an example. Here's our set represented as a binary search tree. And let's say we're trying to figure out whether 9 is in there or not. Well, of course it is. It's right there. But when the algorithm starts out, it has only access to the entry at the top and then the left and the right branches. And it has to decide what to do. So the function looks like this. It's a recursive function that takes in a binary search tree s and a value v. It first checks for a base case that the set itself is empty, in which case v is not there. Another base case is that the entry of s is v, which means that, of course, the set contains that value v right there at the root. Now we have to deal with the cases where we know that 5 and 9 are not the same. There are more branches. Every binary search tree has a left and right branch. And we have to decide which one to explore. If s.entry is less than v, which is true in this case, 5 is less than 9, then we return whatever is the result of set contains on the right branch, looking for that same value we were looking for before. So this idea is that if 9 is somewhere in this tree, it's going to be in this branch, because this branch contains everything that's bigger than 5. And then we need the case where s.entry is greater than v, so then v has to be in the left branch if it's there at all. This is the set contains algorithm, or lookup algorithm, for a binary search tree. And it has an order of growth. Well, the order of growth is actually dependent, again, on where the element appears in the tree. But on average, if we assume it shows up in an arbitrary place in the tree, or not at all, this will be big theta of h, where h is the height of the tree, because every time we make a recursive call on left or right, we're moving down one level in the tree in our search. And what is the height of the tree in relation to the number of elements in the tree in total? Well, the answer is that if the tree is roughly balanced, meaning there's about the same number of things in each left branch and each right branch, then we can claim that the entire search takes theta log n, where the log base 2 recognizes the fact that you cut the amount of work that you have to do in about half each time you make a recursive call, because you're throwing out half the tree, the left branch or the right branch, and keeping the other half. Now log n grows much more slowly than n. And so this can be a huge speed up. And that's why binary search trees are used extensively in practice for lots of different programming applications. So how would we create a new set that contains all the elements of an old set plus one more element? I'll give you a diagram, then we can look at the code. Let's say I have this set already, and I want to adjoin 8 to it, meaning create a new set that contains all this stuff and 8. Well, I have to maintain the property that for each entry anywhere in the tree, and its left and right branch, Everything is smaller in the left, and everything is bigger in the right. So that means that there's only so many places where we could put this 8. What we're going to do is add it as a leaf to the tree, where the leaf doesn't violate the property we want to hold. We need to compare 
the element that we're adjoining to the entry at the root of the tree and figure out whether it should go as a leaf somewhere on the right or somewhere on the left. In this case, it's bigger, so it goes somewhere on the right. At which point, we recursively call it join to figure out where to put it in this subtree. And it needs to be somewhere on the left of 9. What about 7? Well, it needs to be somewhere on the right of 7. So there are empty trees on both the left and the right of 7. And we want to put it where the empty tree is on the right, because 8 is bigger than 7. So we reach to this base case where we're trying to adjoin 8 and an empty set, which is just a set containing 8. We return that set containing 8. And we construct a new set that starts with 7 and then has this new right branch. We return that to replace what 7 was before. So now we have 9 with a new left branch. And finally, we create 5 with a new right branch. So the left branch stays the same. The right branch is replaced by the return value of this recursive call. So that's a diagram of what's going on when we adjoin a value to a set represented as a binary search tree. Let's quickly look at the code. So set contains is defined here. It's called set contains 3 because it's the third different version that we've considered over the course of this lecture. And as you can see, it's the code that we described in the slides. And a join set looks quite similar, except for it's not returning true or false. It's returning a whole tree. So if you reach an empty tree that you're trying to adjoin true, then you can create a new set containing only one element, which is a binary tree with just v. If you ever get to the point where the entry is the value you're trying to adjoin, then there's no reason to add anything new, because there are no repeats in a set. So you just return s as it exists already. Otherwise, you have to decide whether to put this value in the left or the right branch of the tree. So if the entry is smaller than v, it's going to go in the right. So you create a new binary tree with the same entry, the same left branch, but a new right branch, which is whatever was in right before, and v as well. We make a similar recursive call if s.entry is greater than v in order to replace the left branch with something new. 